In this video, I'm going to share three really useful GarageBand for Mac tips. In the first, I'll show you how to actually create your own custom instruments. In the second, I'll show you how to make those instruments sound their best with GarageBand's quantization features. And in the third tip, I'll show you how to chop up and edit the instrument regions you've just recorded. What we're essentially doing here is taking an existing patch from GarageBand's library, stripping out or editing all of the plugins that it has applied to it, tweaking that basic stripped back sound, then adding other plugins, including any third party plugins you have installed on your Mac, to add to the sound of our new instrument. Then we're going to save it as a custom patch so that it can be used in future projects in just a couple of clicks dead easy and really addictive, honestly. So I'll start off with a patch from GarageBand's software instrument library. Note that I have a MIDI keyboard attached to my Mac to make it easier to play and audition sounds. Don't worry if you don't have one, this works with musical typing too. Hit the command and K keys on your typing keyboard to open musical typing and you'll be able to play notes on your typing keyboard. Also, don't worry if your software instrument library looks a little bit different to mine. I have MainStage and Logic installed on my Mac as well as GarageBand, and as all three of Apple's music making programs share a sound library, patches from Logic and MainStage will show up here too. Okay, this Supreme Lead Synth sound uses the sampler as its bass instrument engine, and unfortunately, we can't access it inside GarageBand to edit its sound. This patch already has some plugins applied to it a flanger, EQ, distortion, and delay. You can see as I disable them that the controls dim inside the Smart Controls window too. If I delete the plugins completely, I actually gain more controls from the actual sampler instrument itself. Alright, so now I have my basic synth, I can add in different plugins to shape its sound. One of my favourite plugins at the moment is Bleece Shimmer. It's brilliant for creating weird ambient long tail reverbs. A great free alternative that provides a similar result is Valhalla Supermassive, which also gives you huge reverb sounds. For some extra retro flavour, I'll add in Arturia's excellent free JUN6 chorus plugin. And for a little bit of added grit, I'll throw in Clevgren's free amp here as well. I maybe want to dial it down a wee bit to avoid any gnarly clipping though.
Now that I have my weird spaced out synth sound ready to go, I next need to hit the save button at the bottom of the library window. Next I can name my new patch, that'll do. Once that's done I just need to hit save. Now that I've saved it I can find it in the library whenever I want in any project in the user patches submenu. And you can do this for any of the instrument patches inside GarageBand. Here's a clav sound where I've edited its smart controls and added in extra plugins. And what started out as a basic synth sound that I've converted into an arpeggiated synth wave bass. Really easy to do and a great way to add your own unique style to garage bands built in instruments. Listen to how badly I messed up the recording of this MIDI track. Now I have a couple of options of how I can fix this awful timing. With the offending software instrument track selected, I need to open the editor window. I can do this by clicking on the pencil icon in the top left of the GarageBand screen, by clicking on view in GarageBand's toolbar and selecting show editor, or by hitting the keyboard shortcut E. If I want to have the timing for every note in the track quantized or corrected, I just need to select every region in that track by clicking on my MIDI software instrument tracks track header. Then if I make sure the region tab in the editor window is selected, I can choose a note value that I want to use to quantize the notes in the regions I've selected. Note that you may still have to jump in and do a little bit of manual editing to some notes after quantizing. Here's how that quantized recording sounds compared to the previously dreadfully out of time original. If you're only having trouble with a couple or even a single MIDI note, you can fix that with quantization as well. Again, with the software instrument track selected and the editor window open, I can click on a single MIDI note or drag and select multiple notes to highlight them. I need to make sure the notes tab is selected in the editor window and any note value I choose will then affect the highlighted MIDI notes only. This can be useful if there are only a few really out of time notes in your recording. Personally, I find myself using this single note quantization most often on the first note that I've recorded. There is nothing more irritating than having the first note of your software instrument recording not trigger when playing back because the timing is just a tiny bit out. Selecting that first wayward note and quantizing it is a quick and easy way to fix this issue. Again, with the editor window open and the notes tab selected, 
highlight that first note and quantize away. Regardless of whether you're quantizing an entire region or just a couple of notes, working out what note value to choose when quantizing is as simple as matching up to the amount of beats in a bar, though if you're not sure of this off the top of your head, a little bit of experimentation will get you there as well. Chopping up audio regions is probably the most straightforward, so we'll start there. First off, click on the audio region or audio regions. You can cut multiple at the same point simultaneously you want to cut. Move the playhead to the point where you want the cut to occur. Then you can do one of two things. You can head to Edit in GarageBand's toolbar, then select Split Regions at Playhead or use the keyboard shortcut Command and T. Whichever way you do this, your region will now be split into separate parts, allowing you to delete any unwanted bits from the track and move the parts independently from each other. The process is really similar for MIDI regions. Move the playhead into position, then use either the edit menu or keyboard shortcut to split. Now, depending on whether you've quantized your MIDI regions or not, and where you've made your cut, you may find that you lose MIDI notes at the point where you've made your cut. To fix this, select your MIDI region, then open GarageBand's editor. That's the pencil icon in the top left of the screen. In the editor window in this project, you can see the notes here, but they've been cut off, and they don't play back when I play back the project. I can hover the cursor over the end of the notes until the cursor changes, then resize the notes by dragging them to the size I want. Quantizing your MIDI regions before chopping them up can help to minimize this. You chop up drummer tracks in much the same way. Select a region, move the playhead, then cut using the keyboard shortcut Command and T, or by diving into the edit menu. Depending where you make your cut, you may affect your drummer's performance. If you have the drummer set to play fills, you'll notice that they do this at the end of each drummer region. When you split a drummer region into two, for example, your drummer will play a fill at the end of both new smaller regions. To change this, select the region where you don't want drum fills to occur, open the drummer editor by clicking the pencil icon in the top left again, then turn fills off completely using the fills dial. It's important to make sure you're only selecting the single drummer region here and not the whole drummer track, as this will turn off fills for the whole track. Let me know if you'll be using any of the features I've talked about in this video in your own projects down in the comments, and give that like button a good hard slap on the way past if you found this video helpful. I really appreciate it, and it helps more people see it. But we're not done yet. I've got even more really useful GarageBand for Mac tips that you definitely don't want to miss right here. <laughs>